Rogers Arena in Vancouver is the venue for the post-game show of record. The show that keeps viewers up until the wee hours of the morning has also been known to put them to sleep, but not tonight. <laughs> as our guest on After Hours is uh, Canuck goaltender Corey Schneider, uh, widely regarded as the best backup in the league who uh, would be a starter on many other teams. So you can see where we're going here tonight. But yeah, let's start yeah. with uh, a, a more much. relaxing question, sure. shall we? Um, you're not a dead ringer for Daniel and Henrik, but uh, the red hair and uh, the facial structure provides a bit of a resemblance. Yep. So here's a tweet from Bexa underscore Lover three. Is that really Kevin? Uh, I was wondering. Her, I think her too. name is Helen. But okay. anyway, okay. <laughs> have you ever been called Henrik or Daniel or a Sedine by accident? Uh, yeah, actually, quite often. A lot of times <laughs> when uh, fans see us or I walk by, they'll yell at Henrik or Daniel, and uh, I can have to stop and break the bad news. I'm not one of them. <laughs> actually, somebody else tweeted, and I don't have it in front of me right now. There you go. Look. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you're a dead ringer there. Well, I take that back. You, know what? you, you take Rafi, and we had Alex Bulldog. We had a lot of redheads on that this team. That is true. What yeah. was the question earlier well, the about? Question, yeah. uh, it was from let's, a, let's, I can't remember, and I can't find it now. I do you remember, said about though, it was five Gus, Guts McTavish, 24, yes. said all the Canuck goals tonight were scored by the Gingers, by redheads. That's a great point. Yeah. <laughs> so. You know, well, you know, I think we bring a lot of charisma to this team and a yeah. lot of character. So. <laughs> That's the Canucks' <laughs> new strategy. I was going to say yeah, a minute nice. ago that somebody else had tweeted, and I can't find that one, but uh, they, the question they were, they were asking you was, do you consider yourself to be uh, the better-looking, younger Sadeem brother? I get be the honest. Sadeem triplet sometimes. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's not for me to say, though, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to hockey. Kevin. <laughs> well, you're off to an amazing start, obviously. Uh, you know, with your record being 10-3-2, and two, how comfortable are you feeling now in the net at this point in the season? Yeah, I feel great. I mean, uh, earlier in my career when I came up, I got real nervous and jittery and was afraid to make mistakes and, and get yelled at by my teammates and everything. And, um, you know, I think they could sense that a little bit. But this year it's been it's been different from preseason on. I felt really at ease and uh, part of this team. And I think when you have so many experienced guys and guys who have been here for a while that, uh, you know, you just work so well together and you get comfortable with each other really easily. It's hard, uh, Corey, for a backup goaltender to have a breakout season, especially <laughs> if you're backing up Roberto Luongo. But, but you're having one, and some of the credit uh, we understand goes to Roly Melanson. What's he touching? Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, uh, you know, I got drafted back in 04, so I feel like I've been a prospect forever. So it's about <laughs> about time I kind of cracked the lineup here. But uh, he's he's done wonders for me. He's he's really taught me to stay in my paint and uh, trust my angles and my puck tracking and and not get caught out of my crease too much. And I think. Um, when you let pucks hit you and find you, that it's worked a lot better for me. I don't get, you know, scrambling around and diving all over the place. Mm -hmm. As dominant as you were in the American League, and you were dominant, you became very dominant, uh, how tough was it for you when you first got to the American League, making that transition from playing at, at school? Well, I'm going to add yeah. to that for a second, because sure. I had a long yeah. conversation no with Craig Heisinger uh, yeah. last <laughs> week about you, and he said it took you forever to get your first win in the American Hockey League. Uh, to oh, the well, extent forever. That, well, that felt like enough. forever to them. Yeah, yeah. To the extent that uh, they were starting to pick your starts for you to get you that first win. So yep. just to follow up on what Kevin said, sure. is there a chance that maybe you underestimated the uh, the degree of difficulty in the pro game yeah I think that's a big part of it coming out of college you feel like you're on top of the world you know everything and uh, the pro game is a lot different at least for a goaltender mm -hmm. um, you know the scoring areas are different the the players are more talented and you almost have to adjust to where the dangerous areas on the ice are and I think it took me a good half season to figure that out and uh, as I mentioned earlier just getting confident and comfortable and feeling like you belong at that level yeah. all right so two years ago you were uh, expected to contend for the backup job yep. here and you did but Curtis Sanford got it last yep. year Andrew Raycroft got it how difficult was it to accept for a guy who was drafted in the first round having to go down two years in a row it was hard. I think after my first year, um, you know, it was more expected. And I was looking to go down and dominate for a full year in the American League. And uh, we had a great year. We made it to the finals. And I kind of said, all right, this is the year I'm going to push. And uh, for that year to, to not making it sent down was disappointing at first. But uh, I ended up playing 60 games in the American League. And I think after that, it was almost like nothing can phase you anymore. You've seen pretty much everything mm -hmm. you see here. And I think that gave me that extra little boost of confidence to, to make it this year. For a lot of the fans out there that don't necessarily <laughs> understand, maybe you can explain the difference between playing at the American League level, the gap between the American League and then once you come to the NHL. Because in some senses, yep. it's harder in the NHL, but yet in some senses, it's a little bit easier. Yeah, too. that's exactly right. I mean, uh, the American League is a little bit more scrambly. you got mm -hmm. guys running around a little more, not picking up their assignments, not picking up loose guys. So, um, you know, there are a few more open people, a few more chances that wouldn't happen here. Because here it seems like everyone knows where their man is. Mm -hmm. They take away rebounds. They pick up sticks. They do a great job in that sense. But uh, I think here, when... When they get a scoring chance, when NHL shooters, they get a chance to, to put it where they want to, they can do that. And in the American League, you know, they might miss the net, might roll off their stick, they might not get exactly where they want to put it. 
So it seems like the dangerous scorers in this league really know how to finish. Corey, turning point in your pro career might have been partway through your first season when you were having difficulty getting that sure. first one. I think your record was three or three and seven thereabouts yep. by Christmas. Yep. Scott Arneal, then the coach of the Moose, calls yep. you into his office and tells you what? Uh, <laughs> he said, you're going to get the start tonight, but we don't really want to. I think Drew McIntyre was up here at the time because of injury. And, uh, you know, I think it was that or get sent down to the East Coast League for some conditioning and get some games in there. So he really just laid it on the line. He kind of tore me apart and picked apart my game and, and my professionalism and all that thing, and he didn't say I was ready. So uh, it was that challenge that night where I played a good game, and it just took off from there. Well, when you think about, you know, at Phillips Academy, prep school, you were a star. Then you go to Boston College, and twice you lead the Eagles to the Frozen Four final. So basically all you'd done until you got to the American League was win. Now here's a guy telling you, you're not good enough. Yeah, it's tough, especially, you know, like you said, being on top, you don't get criticized a lot. People don't tell you what you need to work on. People kind of tell you how good you are all the time, and um, you don't really focus on the things that you need to. And I think he was the first person in my career to really sit me down and, and lay it on the line and kind of challenge me as a, as a player, as a professional. And, um, you know, I got the memo. You took it in exactly the right way, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to think so. Yeah. <laughs> and going through those types of things, that, that type of adversity, it builds that character. It gives you the idea of, of how to get through those situations. How has that helped you now that you're here full time to being be able to lean on a lot of those experiences? Yeah, yeah, I think it's great. I mean, uh, you know, you kind of learn over the course of time. It's never as bad as it seems, but it's also never as good as it seems. So you kind of have to stay somewhere in the middle. But I think uh, you know, overcoming that adversity and and fighting through it and believing in yourself and finding that confidence is huge. And um, you know, a lot of people might question the American League about you know what it's for or the developmental aspect, but. Right. Um, for me, I, you know, my three years was well spent, and I, you know, every minute I learned something, and I think it's prepared me well to play in this league, so uh, yeah, I think it was a valuable contributor. Corey, a couple of points on your circumstances here. Uh, let's go back to 06 when the Canucks traded for Roberto Luongo. Now, you're at Boston College then, yep. and two years earlier, you'd been drafted in the first round by the Canucks, as we say, so you're probably thinking, hey, someday I'm going to start for the Canucks, <laughs> and then they acquire Luongo. Yep. Uh, how exactly did you hear about it, and what did you think? Well, I remember I was at a buddy's house, and I just kind of saw it on the bottom line or something like that. And, uh, you know, I was still a little naive in college. Just everything seemed so far away that I didn't really put two and two together. But, uh, you know, I kind of texted my agent and said, well, what does that mean exactly? They traded for Luongo. And uh, he kind of dodged the question and said, well, think of it this way. At least goalies are making $6.5 million a year now. So he, uh, I think he knew exactly what was going on, but I didn't, right. I didn't quite understand the time. But you know what? Um, it's been great playing with Lou and, and learning under him and working with him. You know, we've gotten along really well this year, and um, to see him every single day has been, uh, you know, it's been a treat for me. He's only got 11 years left on his contract, so I think that hey, would suggest yeah. that it's going to be tough for you to become a starter here. But with the way you're playing, your value is uh, <laughs> only going up. Here's a tweet from uh, Pass It to Bulis. Yep. Ask Schneider. That's his handle, by the way, Pastor okay. Boulos. Ask Schneider if he's ever considered putting laxative in Luongo's water <laughs> like Danny Saberhan did to get some playoff minutes. <laughs> I think you know what he's talking about? That was the, yeah, I yeah, that the series against Anaheim. Well, like we talked about, you never want to get your hands dirty. you got to have someone else do it for you. <laughs> so that way you stay away from Great the crime answer. scene. Yeah, exactly. Great answer. <laughs> Smart. Uh, we'll conclude uh, <laughs> the backup role with this question. Sure. What have you learned from Roberto Luongo? Because there are benefits to playing behind him. Yep, absolutely. I think, uh, well, first of all, I think it's allowed me to ease into the league a little bit. You know, he's, he's gotten some of the tougher starts to start the year, and they were able to pick my starts a bit. But uh, I think just the way we work together on the ice with Roly and Melanson and, and just seeing him compete and how hard he prepares for every single game. This is a guy who I think one year played 76 games, and mm -hmm. to me that's just mind-boggling to be able to play that many games at such a high level. So, um, you know, I think, like I said, just, just watching his work, work ethic and his professionalism every game, it, uh, it just, you know, pushes me to be that much better. Great. Corey Schneider is our guest on After Hours. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk about uh, the way in which he is honoring the history of goaltenders past from Vancouver as we continue from Rogers Arena. Back with you at Rogers Arena in Vancouver. Corey Schneider of the Canucks, our guest in After Hours after three years in the American League, clearly in the NHL to stay. Corey, here's a tweet from a guy named The Falconer. It's not a question, he says, but make sure you get Schneider to do his Yannick Hansen impression. Apparently it's better than Burroughs doing Crawford. 
<laughs> little bit of Yannick Hansen. <laughs> No keep going, that's way. pretty good. Yeah, keep no going. I don't know how happy I'd be I'm doing this, but uh, all the boys love it. They think it's hilarious, so I do it every now and then. Especially Coach V. <laughs> Very that's good. You good just stuff. made the show. Yeah, yeah, a lot of work went into the A lot of work went into the mask that you unveiled on the occasion of the Canucks' 40th anniversary. So tell us about the design. Yeah, I uh, wanted to do something throwback, a little old school, just to, like you said, uh, you know, pay homage to the goalies past. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I came up with this with my, my paint guy, who uh, is a pretty good guy. And Who's your painter? Uh, Derek Gilders. Back yep, in Gilders. Our, you know, yeah, Gilders. Gilders so, Design. Uh, yeah, exactly. So I, I kind of gave him the theme, and he came back with this idea of all the masks. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we got Kirk McLean and, nice. and Ridley and Garrett and uh, Bromley, all those guys. So uh, I thought it'd be kind of cool to mix new and old. Just, Sweet. You know, like I like that. Like 40th anniversary, yeah. So, you know, some of the other past guys, like those guys, would come up and, and said thank you and that they appreciate it. And, um, you know, I don't have... I'm not that individualistic. I don't have enough things yeah. to put on there myself, so I had no right. idea what to do. So I just thought it'd be kind of cool to, to do a little well, throwback. Well, you got Schneid's Sweet. on the back plate, but uh, oh, I, I understand there is something, an expression you may add to that later. Um, like add to the Schneid's? Yeah. yeah. On the, uh, it's from Monty Python. Oh, right. Yeah. I, yeah I, I, usually, I usually get Nutshell <laughs> Pass put on the back as well. Yeah. Um, you know, my dad is a huge Monty Python fan, so he okay. had me watching the Holy Grail when I was a little kid. <laughs> and uh, the Black Knight would stand there and say, Nutshell Pass. So... Uh, I usually have it on there. It kind of got missed this time, but uh, uh, we'll make sure it's on there next time. Nice. Okay, so what the about blocker. the blocker? Yeah, yeah. yeah this is something that. I started doing in college because even when I broke in in college, yep. um, you know, I used to get away, Scott. That's teamwork. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Love that. I used to get uh, pretty nervous during games, and uh, this is something I started doing my freshman year, and just mm -hmm. little notes, little you know, you know, cheat sheet on my blocker. Yep, so every now and then, sure. if, if you're in, just you're, like this. yeah, exactly. Like that. Yeah, you're in the soup, and you get worried. You turn down. You look at it. It just kind of calms you down. So. I don't use it quite as much as I used to, but I think maybe it's good luck or maybe it's just, uh, you know, something that I do to keep me steady still. Yeah, we're, 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 we're racing here, so I want to get okay, this sure. in, Kevin. Um, they still talk in Manitoba about the Super Bowl party the Moose had and <laughs> which you and Alex Bolduc provide at the halftime entertainment. Before you answer, yep. we have some video of it, so let's have no a look. No way. <laughs> Seriously? No, we That's don't. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know if cell phone cameras exist. I just, <laughs> never mind. I just wanted to get it. actually pretty good, though. See so what the look on your face. It was actually pretty good. All right, you grew up in Marblehead, a Boston suburb, a suburb which made you, by birth, obviously, legally obligated to become a Boston Red Sox fan. Absolutely. You played two years of varsity baseball at prep school, Phillips yep. Academy. Yep. Uh, could you have just as easily pursued baseball as a pro sport? I'd like to think so. I mean, uh, I was a catcher there, um, so I must have some sort of equipment fetish. You know, I just like wearing the gear. I think it's more fun. Um, I mean, I, I only played in the spring. Summers were consumed with hockey, and uh, at that point, I kind of made my mind up. But uh, it was something I loved doing. I still miss baseball to this day. And uh, like you said, huge Red Sox fan. So I go home in the summer. It's watch a lot of games. Final quick question. You sure. left Boston College after your junior year without your degree. Do you have it now? I do. I got it in December. Nice. Yep. Congrats, oh. man. Yeah. yeah. So I uh, came back and in the summers. In? Yep. Did classes. And, and, and you, that your degree's in? What's that? Finance. Finance, yes. Nice. So so finance. Is, so there, there, go is ahead, there anyone go. on the Canuck roster smarter than you? Yeah, of course there are. I think, uh, <laughs> you know, a bunch of guys are a lot smarter than me. I'm Maybe just, I'm just a goalie. I don't know what I think. Uh, you were the best goalie not in the NHL last year. This year, you're the best backup, not a starter. Uh, don't, <laughs> don't worry, know Corey. The future is coming. <laughs> yeah, I <All> hope right. so. <laughs> Corey Schneider, the Vancouver Canucks, our guest in After Hours, back to conclude the proceedings from the Rogers Arena in Vancouver in a moment. Thanks, Corey. Thanks again. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot.